Hello, hello, YouTube. Welcome back, everyone, to Mod Mondays. Hopefully, everyone is well. I've been feeling really physically drained lately. Mentally sharp, just sleepy literally all the time. Uh, yes, I do realize this is Tuesday, not Monday. Continuing on, today we're in Kenshi again, and we'll be looking at another friend of mine's mod. Hive Cybernetics by Luciferous is another underrated playthrough mod that adds variation to your playthroughs. Hive Cybernetics adds in 10 new races, 20 new armor pieces and variations, 10 new characters, 3 new buildings, and 4 items in the scope of limbs when a new race gets its limbs chopped off. It also adds in 1 new faction, 1 town edit, 1 new town, 8 new pieces of tech, 2 new backpacks, 2 new starts, 4 new weapon manufacturer levels along with various dialogue lines. As always, this isn't a deep dive but rather a surface level playthrough and overlook. As such, not everything explorable and added by the mod will be covered. In the background, we have B-roll and a small playthrough I did throughout the day Sunday and today, i.e. yesterday, Monday, to grab the footage. Before we start, I want to highlight something I noticed that I think is worth mentioning. Despite the mod saying that compatibility shouldn't be an issue in its very description, this is sadly not true. While the changes are not that big of a deal in of themselves, they may cause conflicts. As you can see in the footage on the screen, there are actually two changes to vanilla setups adding the side Hachigane to the armor smithy and allowing the makeshift gate to upgrade to the defensive gate too. These changes may cause issues with other mods like general modifications which may have its own edits to these or other mods like Forgotten Buildings. Now do I honestly think this will break your save if you're playing with other mods? No. But I do think it's worth mentioning this for everyone as it's something that could cause issues. If you guys have any suggestions of what mod to cover next week for Kenshi, leave them down below in the comments. Starting off with tech, we have 8 new tech pieces and one of these is the core technology you will need to use and enable the rest. All tech except for the base core tech branch require one AI core. The core branch is simply called cybernetics. This is unlocked like the rest of the tech at tech level 6 and costs one ancient science book. The rest of the technology unlocks after this one core piece and all cost one AI core each. Arguably something I'll change in Genesis as that's relatively expensive and they could all be unlocked in one tech branch or much more likely blueprints. While the rest of the tech is unlockable without the core technology it won't do you any good without the bench enabled which you will need to craft all cybernetic pieces. I actually started this playthrough off in the town here which you can see its location on the screen throughout this section in the bottom right hand corner. Located northeast of Mongrel, it's actually very easy to get to, but it is sadly wide open without any walls. While this would make sense in the grand scheme of level design, this does present some issues with other mods like Circum Soldiers Hives Expanded. This can be seen especially in that mod and with others like Genesis. Thus, I removed the location in Genesis and will add a more dense storyline involving the experiments, the cybernetics, and the tech hunters. I'll let the players of the mod explore the location and its story as they like here rather than deep diving into all of its content. Throughout the video so far in the background as you've seen my journey to Mongrel from Auckland's Gulf through the Foglands to the new city we've had on the new armors and bags. To be very transparent here the mod is of course called Hive Cybernetics. But as we look around the squad we have created here, you can see I actually spawned the armor onto Shek's humans, skeletons, and even their female counterparts. Now bear in mind that this mod is meant for Hivers. So what this means for those of you who don't know is that Hivers and skeletons are all rigged to a male skeleton. Or in this case, let me clarify, Hivers and robots are all rigged to a male skeleton. That's a modeling creation term meaning that armors typically will work on most male characters but need to be separately rigged to a female skeleton to even remotely appear normal. <coughs> There's stretching and tearing and texture issues on female skeletons as you can see in the playthrough on screen. This of course doesn't mean that there isn't clipping as you can see here on the human and Shek variations or in the case of the skeletons here, it looks like they have a giant metal chastity belt protecting their robotic virginity. There is one new weapon here, a short pole arm that extends as it's pulled out, 
through a trick of differing models between the sheath and the held weapon. Editor Atlas here. I do like the appeal and I think it looks very, very cool. So it's something I'll work on adding to the humans on my side of things in Genesis. While I could go through and list every single race edition here, it's actually better just summed up. That is to say, if there is a Hiver race in vanilla, there is now a cyborg counterpart to it. Various texture changes, including tattoos, different eye sockets, and numbered markings all across their body. And of course, the progenitor race, which is a brighter blue Fogman. The race is for the most part exactly identical to the vanilla races in stats and functionality meaning that they still need to eat to live, unlike actual skeletons in-game. There are also a handful of changes to the vanilla races in terms of racial unlocks, so every vanilla hiver type is now playable, which is another unmentioned change. Not that big of a deal, again, but something to bear in mind. This change, however, won't conflict with anything that does actually unlock them. The biggest issue I noticed while testing was actually that the hive group was added too. And while it does indeed make sense to do this for automatic dialogue interaction, it does make race selection pretty cluttered when it comes to the Hivers. Wrapping this Mod Monday up today, we'll take a quick glance at the rest of the additions without an overly deep dive. The buildings are simply clone buildings from vanilla, the bed, the bench, etc. The dialogue is decently written, if a bit dry. Most items you'll find in the game are added by the mod are body parts, heads, and limb replacements, or as they would be called in vanilla, cybernetics. Basically, you have robot limbs. When it comes to trading, you'll find the Hive Cybernetics armor, limbs, and weapon additions in the new town. While not a bad move, ensuring compatibility and avoiding some vendor list issues, it does mean that players are forced to go to one town. And if that town, as I mentioned earlier, is attacked, the squads can be permanently lost. Thank you everyone for watching this. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. If you guys liked the video, leave a like. And if you want more content like this or to follow Genesis Progress or even just watch some other content, feel free to subscribe. Also, if you like the mod, don't forget to leave a like on that mod and leave words of encouragement to the authors. The music throughout the video is done by Carl Schmidt, a fantastic artist who does Kenshi, Warhammer, and other thematic music scores. If you like the background music throughout the video, go leave a like and sub to his content. The links to his music are linked in the description. And of course, I'd be remiss not to invite you all to my guild server. As of now, we do currently still have 12 more weeks of giveaways going on. By the end of December, we should have many more giveaways stocked up throughout the Christmas holidays. Thank you everybody for watching. I'm Atlas and I am out.